Hello, Gwenters, and welcome to another episode of Gone Gwenting. Today I want to walk you through how to get more keys. Since last episode we talked about how to get cards, today we're going to talk about keys. So we're going to get right into this. First way, contracts. So today we're going to focus on how you get one of your first contracts. I find this one to be one of the most fun contracts you can get. It's called, It's Getting Crowded In Here. So you're going to pop open your contracts panel. You're going to do that by going up to your character screen, click on con contracts at the bottom. Then you see here, I've tagged for myself, it's getting crowded in here. You can go to that tracked menu uh, just by clicking on the contracts and then you go to tracked, then you can select which ones you wanna use. You can even search for this specific contract. So now we've got that selected, we're gonna get right into the deck builder. Now, I <laughs> when I made this video, I did Fruits of His Geeth which is a great ability, helps you win. Tip on contracts. If it says you need to win, you gotta win. If it doesn't say that, you don't have to win. And on this one, you don't have to win. So if I could go back, I'd actually choose a Rockus Swarm. First off, you actually get more provision count. Second off, you can spawn five characters all at once to either of your rows of your choice. But I'm gonna show you how to do this with the Fruits of His Geeth. So we're gonna get in here. I'm dropping down a few of these high potency abilities. This is high provision costs, and I just want to see how many I can fill in here and then backfill those other characters. So right now I've got Renew, Portal, Old Spear Tip of Sleep, Osril, and as I build this deck I'm going to realize I got too many. I have a, my provision count is a little high. So I'm going to kind of spin you through this. Uh, let's let's fast forward this a bit. All right, next card I'm gonna add, and I just wanna pause on this one because it is the key to getting ahead here. Okay, we got Kikimor Worker, which is a protector for other insectoids. Uh, he has that high, uh, high vitality count at seven, and then every time you play an insectoid, he gets more armor. So he becomes kind of a focus fire character for the enemy. They wanna knock down that, uh, that vitality count by attacking him, so he's an important character to get out there, especially since the true feeder of this game is the Kikimor Warrior, which you can get in the Syndicate card packs. But let's skip forward a little bit further till we add that guy. One of the other key cards we're gonna use here are the Andrega Larva. Okay, those are gonna spawn one uh, that you put on the board, as well as an additional one of the same card. So that's two cards for one. Then we also have Drone Nest. It's gonna spawn four drones for you on one row. Uh, we can use Crow's Eye to have, utilize Death Wish to have the Harpy's Egg spawn a Harpy. Natural Selection, damage enemy unit by four, then spawn for overkill damage, which is how much damage you do in addition to the vitality it required to kill it. So if they have one vitality, use that card, it'll spawn three drones on your row. So that's another good option to use here. But again, like I said before, I think the true key to this deck um, and especially if you're using a Raka Swarm, is to use the Insectoids. And Drega Warrior is a good choice here. You can consume adjacent uh, creatures. If they're Insectoids, you spawn two more drones. So if you just consume drones, you get two more drones. Uh, and then you have the Drone Nest. That's gonna give you drones when it dies. You can use that Crow's Eye to use that Death Wish ability to spawn those drones without killing it. And then Neckers. Neckers are key to this. Low cost card. They have Thrive, so they can build up over time, and again, two for one card here. But that Kikimor Warrior has a special ability. Every time it uses its order, you kill one of your own, but it spawns another one of itself. So the first one used an order, doesn't have a cooldown, so you can only use it once, but you're gonna get another one that does have the same ability, and it's gonna be able to create another one of itself. And you just keep going. And again, key point here on these contracts, you don't have to win, okay? So if the other person passes, just fill your side of the board. Get this contract done. Get that key. Get yourself some more cards. And especially if you're an early game player, you're not going for a pro ranking, okay? Just get yourself those keys. All right, but let's get you into this. Let's show you how this gameplay works. All right, let's pop open a game. Now, you could use the seasonal Mahakam, but because I want this video to perpetuate a little longer, we're just gonna do a classic battle here. So let's pop that open. Now, one key thing I did want to raise on this uh, 
just always keep in mind when you are playing with the fruits of his geeth that you have to actually spawn the f fruit of Gunnyorkia first. If you don't do it as first thing in your round, the leader ability cancels itself. So that's really key when you're playing with Kikamore Warrior. You need to spawn it first, then use the ability to eat the fruit. So this is a key part in playing here. So looking at what we got, we got the uh, we have the Kikamore Soldier. Remember that's going to draw their fire. We have Kikamore Warrior. We have the uh, Indrega Larva. Um, we also have the Harpy's Egg, and we have uh, Abaya as well as Crow's Eye. So this is a great hand along with the Ogroid, uh, the, the Necker, right? So we get two Neckers, we get the two uh, Indrega larvae, and we're just gonna go on through with this. I love this hand. All right, like I said before, first thing you need to do is spawn one of those Fruits of Iskeet. Drop that on that front row. Now there's no reason to use our plus five point ability yet, um, though we will need to use it in order for us to get the full boost here. All right. We got our Neckers out, we got our Food of Gnorkia out, now we gotta get out these Andraga larvae and pray that Skellige, or the mean jerks they are, doesn't use his leader ability, which does eight random damage to all of our characters at once, or use a bunch of damage characters that are gonna ruin our lives. But we lucked out, he's playing a Drummond Crane's Guard, which is a great card, it has the same kind of uh, mechanic as the Kikamore Warrior, actually, so every time she gets damaged, spawns another one of herself, she can keep spawning those over and over and over again. Uh, the only downside between uh, her and the Shield Maiden is Shield Maiden will draw your other cards out of your deck. But uh, skipping forward, you see I just played the Kikimore Warrior, dropped him down. I want to be able to start eating those Fruits of Iskeeth every time. If I can get a good train rolling here, we've got this under our belt. Let's just pray that he doesn't put a lock on it, he doesn't kill it, or do something else that's gonna ruin our game. Oh, speaking of which, this reminds me, this is a great time to play uh, the bottom left, if you click on your character icon, you can uh, in-game chat with one of the six pre-made chats. I always love to throw hurry up out there while they're taking a long time. That actually fulfills one of your contracts as well, uh, and that's a multi-tiered contract. So you can do it 10 times, then 100 times, then 1,000, then you know, on and on, and each time it gives you successively more keys. So always make sure to just say something to the other guy. You can always say, great job, bad move, thanks, whatever you want. Uh, there's always the pre-taunt that's like, I'm gonna take you down. Um, and it's kind of a cool interaction with the leader characters that you have as well. So look at this, we're killing it. Right now, he is focused on getting out his Haymade Protector, which means he anticipates damaging his own characters. And we're just gonna keep dropping that fruit of uh, getting Orkia and using that Kikimore Warrior. Alright, one thing I always forget when I do this, uh, whenever I play Kikimore Warriors, is I feel like I've just played a card, because you get an extra card on the board. It's a net two points though, it's not like, oh, I played an okay card. But you haven't played your card yet. So let's throw out that Harpy's Egg out here. We're gonna want to use that Death Wish ability twice. And we don't need to fill up that Kikimore Warrior row. He's clearly not worried about those guys, so we're just gonna let him ignore them. Keep dropping the fruits down, keep spawning keep more warriors. He's gonna pray to do the uh, the Queen's Guard up on top, but he seems to be taking a little while. There he goes, he's getting started. Uh, note that he is also benefiting that Heimei Protector is benefiting every time he gets attacked. Again, look here, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in uh, put in a comment here. I was all put well played, you know. Uh, it seems like a friendly thing to do. He's gonna get that same train going. Looks like he said the same thing back to me. So I think we're all kind of just having a good time trying to trying to work this game out. You also find, especially in your earlier games, before you rank up and you play harder people, uh, you know, young people, we're just trying to figure this out. You're trying to figure out how the cards work. You're trying to figure out whether or not when you play an order card, uh, if it doesn't have cooldown, do you actually get to play it again? The answer is no. I didn't know that. Uh, you also think, well, hey, if I play a card that gives an extra charge to an order card, will that give it an extra charge if it doesn't have a cooldown? No, it will not. So make sure that you have a card that either has a cooldown or it has a charge count, and that will be explicitly stated on the card, so make sure you read that. Alright, so annoying thing here, this guy just took out one of our cards. Um, good news for us, though, the guy's kind of a moron. Uh, he attacked the one doomed card on the board, so doomed is important, especially for monsters, because it immediately gets 
erased from the game after the end of the turn. Other cards go to your graveyard. You can use Osril or Ghoul. Uh, there's a uh, Morntart, a bunch of characters in Monsters especially that allow you to consume characters in your graveyard or to recall characters in your graveyard. So if you ever use a 5 attack on someone, uh, you probably should just wait it a turn and then use it on one of my one of my neckers. Would have been a better choice for him. But again, so you can see also Fruits of His Geeth is a doomed card every time, so it can't stay out there. Um, it can't stay back in your deck. All right, see that? Use that Crow's Eye. Spawn another Solano. Uh, spawn another Harpy from that Harpy's Egg. Then we're gonna use that Solano's Har Solano Harpy later on to devour the Harpy's Egg. Give another Harpy. Uh, it's gonna get our our point count up and maintain the same total number of cards on the board. It's taking a little while. Uh, uh oh, here's what I was worried about. Ha! Lucky us. Um, he should have used that earlier in the game. So uh, that's his special leader ability. It does its reckless flurry. It does eight damage, one damage each, uh, successively, randomly. So if there's only a few cards on the board and they're all low like ours were uh, probably five turns ago, then he could have killed all of our people and ruined our day. So he probably should have used it the first turn the Kikimor Warrior was out and not waited this long. But again, we're just gonna keep this train rolling, keep dropping the fruits of his keep, keep using those Kikimor Warriors. One thing I will point out uh, for this contract, you might wanna count the cards on the board. When it gets up to eight or especially nine, it looks like it's full. It's not, okay? You can put 10 cards on each row. So make sure you have 10 cards on each row. And importantly, this is why we track the quest. When you track it, you will see the notification come up in the top right that says, you've completed this contract. Uh, so that's what we're looking for here. But right now, let's drop this down. Again, this is a key point. If the contract says you need to win, play to win, okay? Stay focused on that. A uh, key one of those is you have to win with 100 provision costs or less. I'll make a video on that. Uh, that one was murder. That one took me forever. Um, but for this one, you don't have to win. So you can see here, I already have the card. I already have the vitality points on him by like twice his points. But I want this contract. I want that key. That's how you get free cards. So get those keys, people. All right, here we go. Last play. We're just going to drop down Kikimor Warrior. Mostly because I know I can play Ghoul. And boom, there you see it, top right. Contract completed. It's getting crowded in here. Anyway, uh, leave a comment down below. Subscribe for more videos. Learn more about contracts. And I'll get out some more content. But for now, have fun. Go Gwenting.